I'm going to be breaking down the process of how to draw a horse's hair with colored pencils, going over the steps you should take for getting realistic results. Before we get into the steps to drawing realistic looking horse hair, let's cover a few things. The color of the horse hair that I'm drawing for this video, of course, is black. And that will kind of make it a little easier for you if you're trying to learn how to draw horse hair and you really just have no experience with it or don't know what you're doing. In it being black, it means that you can just focus on trying to draw the overall basic concept of how to draw realistic horse hair without having to add in a bunch of different colors or other little details that you need to use another tool for, as well as some other techniques of drawing your strokes with them. Now let's move into those steps. The first step when it comes to drawing realistic horse hair is to start off with drawing at least one hair in a particular strip that you're trying to draw, and that's going to be your guide hair. Now your guide hair serves the purpose of allowing you to see where you want to draw this strip of hair and you're going to try and build up more structure and add more hairs into the area that you have drawn this particular guide hair. Because one of the most important things when it comes to drawing realistic looking flowy hair is that hair clumps together. So there isn't going to be a whole bunch of individual strands going every which way. That would actually give you a very unrealistic look. Now when you're drawing the guide hair in itself, you need to try and follow a few practices with that. One is that, of course, if you're using a reference photo, you want to study that reference photo pretty good and try to memorize the movement pattern for that particular strand that you're going to be drawing. So that way when you start drawing that hair, you can kind of mimic that pattern, but you need to have a good idea of the pattern that you're going in in your mind before you start drawing it on the paper. Because once you get your pencil onto the paper and start drawing this guide hair, you want the flow of the line you're drawing on your paper to be pretty smooth. Now, there is some variation. This particular horse that I'm drawing is a Frisian, so they do kind of have curly hair, which I'm not going to be drawing specifically really straight flowy hair. There will be a little bit of curl to it, but my overall meaning by this is that you want the line you're drawing to be smooth, not all jaggedy. When you're drawing and looking at your reference photo at the same time, trying to draw one line, and you're going back and forth with looking, you'll be stopping and then going, stopping and going. And each time you kind of do that, you'll end up creating breakpoints in that strip of hair. Regardless of the hairs being curly, you want your entire stroke to be fluid and smooth. And another key thing when you're drawing these hairs is to make sure you have a very steady, loose hand. You do not want to be applying a lot of pressure to get these hairs, and you will be having to really memorize the shape of each hair that you draw before you draw it. And that will also maximize the smooth smoothness of each strand of hair as you draw because the last thing you wanna do is end up having a bunch of little tiny squiggles as you're holding your pencil not in a fluid motion. So then you end up with this hair that really looks kind of ragged and not smooth. So just be mindful of how you're doing your strokes and it's you're, you come to a point in your drawing where that background is done and whatever you add over the top of it, you can't really erase it. And especially because this is black. If I were to try and erase any of these hair details that I am drawing, it's not going to erase. These black lines will still show through because that's just kind of the nature of using the darkest value colored pencil that you have Colored pencils just don't erase that well, and you're not going to be able to draw over the top of this very well to correct any mistakes either. So be mindful of that as well, and don't beat yourself up for trying to take your time doing this because it's going to take you some time, and if anything, that's going to help you out in making less mistakes. Just take your time thinking about exactly how you want to draw these hairs. When you look at your reference photo, try to envision that with your drawing and exactly what that needs to look like as you draw it. So another tip that I have for you guys with drawing this hair is as I said before, you kind of pick a clumping section of hair, right? With these clumping sections of fur, as I said before, or hair, not fur, <laughs> you need to pick one 
strand and draw that first initial hair to kind of dictate the shape and curvature that you're going to be making for that particular clumping section. Really the best way to go about it is trying to build the end of the hairs first before you build the body of it. Now that may seem counterproductive to what you might think and that you need to draw from the base of the horse's head and all the way out to the end. That's not really the best method to drawing realistic looking hair like this. You're going to end up struggling to have the base of the hair come out to where you need it to. And oftentimes you'll end up having a lot of loose floater hairs, I guess you could say, than what you would need. And it's going to end up giving you a very unrealistic look. So further on, as I'm drawing these hairs, you'll start to notice that I actually start at the end of the hairs, or at least draw one hair. And I'm making the focus on starting maybe from the middle of that strand of hair that I just drew. I'm not even connecting it to the base of the horse yet. And that's because I'm trying to build out that um, clumping shape at the end of the hair before I start building other strands from the base of the horse's head into that strand that comes out to the end. The next step is to build up the structure of the strip adding more hairs along with that original guide hair. When you're drawing these hairs though, you want to try and make them a little different than that original guide hair. You don't want all of the hairs kind of going in the same wave patterns as that first hair. They all need to differentiate a little bit. Now, why is this important? Well, if you're looking at the reference photos that you're using and you pinpoint those specific strips that you're trying to draw, you'll notice that a lot of those other hairs around there aren't, if you could just isolate them into individual hairs that you're probably going to draw, they're not all the same. They're all differentiating just a little bit. Some of them are kind of weaving in and out and over the original hair you may have drawn. And that's the kind of look that you're going for. Now you don't want a whole lot of variation, but you want just a little bit. And usually what I prefer doing with my hairs is drawing that original guide hair and then I draw two to three other hairs kind of overlapping and coming to the same length and ending very very closely to that original guide hair. Then most of the other hairs that I draw along with that I try to taper them off before I get to the end because you'll notice on a reference order you might be looking at that those hairs come to like one really fine point. That's because all of the other hairs are kind of tapering off before it gets to that point. So you need to try and make sure you're doing that with the strips of hair that you're drawing as well. And the reason why you don't want to draw too many that are varying is because then it will start to look like it's not an actual clumping structure. Like there's lots of different strips of hair coming off and you don't want them to go way off out and crossing over a bunch of other sections or getting too close to that because then it will ruin the basic structure of those individual strips. Now, another factor with drawing these additional hairs along with your original hair is that you don't want to draw them super, super dark. You do want to kind of do a light hand while you draw these so that they're not in there too dark. You can always come back later and draw over the top of them or add other hairs in that are a little bit darker where you're adding more pressure with your pencil. It's important to try and get those soft kind of feathery hairs in as well as those darker hairs later. And more of what you're wanting to do at this stage is try to draw with a light hand so you have a little more ability to try and get those soft, not as obvious hairs. The next step is to connect the base of the mane to the strips and add hairs to make them blend together. By doing this, by completing these steps in this way, you have a end point where you've kind of finished things off and you have a start point. So now all you need to do is connect both of those, which makes things a lot easier when you're trying to draw hair. This kind of breaks down those steps of the actual hair drawing process and of course makes it much easier for you to try and get a more realistic result. Instead of having to draw, say, from building a base of the mane and then drawing everything out to the ends because oftentimes when you do that, you can end up with a much less realistic look. It just makes things a lot easier to have it broken down this way. 
But of course, you don't have to draw the exact way that I do. This is just the way that I draw and it does make the process a little easier to do. Now, of course, with this particular horse hair that I'm drawing, it's black. So I am going to try and build up the base of the mane and work on trying to eliminate all of the white of the paper because this is a dark section of the mane. It is one of the darker portions of the horse on the drawing and it is really jet black. So I'm gonna try and build up as much black as I can, get those layers maxed out, and then kind of blend it into the strips that I have drawn already. Now, there is some technicality still in this step, namely being that in drawing and connecting both of these sections together, you still need to be referring to the reference photo that you're using and trying to draw and memorize the particular sections that you're working on and connecting that particular area to the particular strip that you already have. And of course, drawing hair in general is really, really tedious and it can seem like a really, really lengthy process. And honestly, it kind of is, but don't get so overwhelmed by it. Just focus on one particular area, try to get that step done, then move on to another area and just focus on each little area that you can work on instead of the whole thing all at once. Really though, in terms of steps, this is the easiest step that you have to do. The hard ones is the first part where you're trying to draw those um, starter hairs or the guide hairs and trying to get those to look right because you really do have to spend a lot of time trying to stare at your reference photo and just get it memorized on how those hairs need to look so that you can get that same realistic look because in actuality uh, it's pretty hard to try and draw realistic looking hair like this that flows off on a running animal without having an actual real life reference to look at because you can't quite mimic the real movements of hair depending on the movements of the horse which causes the movements of the hair. So having a reference photo to try and draw realistic looking horse hair is going to help you out. And with your drawing, you're always going to want to try and memorize, memorize, memorize those particular sections of those strips coming off, how they look and drawing those on your actual drawing. Now, another thing to pay attention to in connecting the base structure of the mane to those strips that you have is to try and pay attention to the actual gaps between the hairs too. You, you wanna try and start on the ends and connect the ends to your strip before you start filling in the overall inside of it. That way you kind of have your exterior confines of where you need to actually build the entire strip all out and connect it all together. It is important to try and draw in any gaps between the strips as you are adding in the base structure to the mane. And you can learn more about drawing horse hair and this entire horse drawing from following along with the real-time version of this drawing as a tutorial available on my $10 tier on Patreon. There you'll also have access to loads of other drawing tutorials as well. Click on the link here to learn more about signing up for Patreon.